And from this information, we'll learn a lot what's going on during that EDL phase and help, help us to plan our future missions. EDL is very, very hard. And it, it will be nerve-wracking time on Sunday for all of us. Uh, but we do believe that it is a risk worth uh, taking because I think that the science that the mission will return will be outstanding and will open up a new chapter of how we understand Mars to be. And I'll turn it over to Peter, who is the PI of the mission, to talk to you about the science. Thank you, Poop. Nearly 11 years ago, during the Pathfinder mission, I was sitting in this exact chair and I was showing pictures of the uh, Chrisley Planitia part of Mars. And if I can show my first graphic, this is what those pictures look like. These are images along with those from the two Viking landers, landers that show that the surface of Mars is a cold, dry, barren planet. And this is something that we have come to understand about uh, at least the equatorial regions on Mars over the last uh, 30 or 40 years of exploration of the Martian surface. But for the last four and a half years, the Spirit and Opportunity rovers have been studying the ancient history of Mars. And this is written into the rocks. And they study the rocks which show the, uh, what Mars was like shortly after it uh, cooled. And uh, what they have learned is that it was wet and potentially a habitable planet. What happened to Mars? In February 2002, Odyssey scientists made a major discovery that water ice surrounds the polar cap. Now we see in this uh, globe that I'm holding next to me, there's an exposed polar cap. Odyssey found that within 60 degrees and uh, northward, there is ice underlying what seems like a very dry environment. The same is true in the south. <clears throat> um, so if I could show my first graphic, or second graphic, uh, the Landers, the two uh, rovers and uh, the two Vikings and Pathfinder are all near the equatorial zone where Odyssey did not see ice near the surface. And Phoenix is way to the north. And if I can come back to the globe, then let me show you uh, Pathfinder and Viking 1 landed here on the globe. We are all the way up at 68 degrees north where this little dot is positioned way up next to the polar cap, but not on the polar cap. That's a, there's a big distinction. So there is soil overlying the ice, and we are going to be investigating that uh, uh, situation. If, if this were on the Earth, and my next graphic shows where we would be on the Earth, it's in the northwest territories of Canada, way up near the Arctic Sea. So this is far away from where people live on the planet, most people for that matter. And uh, um, it's a place where uh, there's a lot of things that we're learning about the Earth from the Arctic regions. One is that climate change from our planet is written into the ices in the uh, Arctic region on the Earth. And two, this is where the history of life is preserved in its purest form. In other words, organic molecules and cellular um, uh, bacterial microbes and so forth are preserved in this ice. We're wondering if this is true on Mars. Uh, Phoenix is really part of a larger NASA program to look for life on Mars. And the first, there's three parts to looking for life on Mars. The first is follow the water. Find, find water on the planet. And that's what Odyssey has done. And that's what Phoenix is all about, is understanding that discovery that Odyssey has made. We're landing on ice. Second, is there a habitable zone associated with the water areas on Mars? That is the, the business of the Phoenix mission, is to make that assessment. And third, and for future missions, not Phoenix, is this habitable zone actually inhabited? And is there some sort of microbial or even uh, multicellular life that exists in the habitable zone? We will not be able to do that. We do not have the right instruments. But since we expect to land on icy soil, when we land, there will not be liquid water according to the temperatures that we've measured from orbit. Uh, we're really trying to understand whether the ice has ever melted because it's liquid water that uh, is required for a habitable zone, liquid water. And so how will we know the history of the ice by just landing on it and looking at the soil? 
We know it by the chemistry, the minerals, and the microscopic shapes of the grains that make up the soil. Because water is an agent of change, and it will change volcanic soils into clays, into other minerals that we can measure those uh, mineral contents and understand what has happened. In particular, we will look, be looking for salts because if there was ever an abundance of water associated with these soils, it would have evaporated, leaving salts behind. So that's how we'll search for the, for the liquid water in the history of uh, Mars climate change. Uh, so it may not have happened recently. It might be back 100,000 years, a million years, 5 million years. But it's not ancient Mars. This is modern Mars. And that's the distinction between Phoenix and the rover missions. Uh, so liquid water is the basic ingredient. But second, you have to have complex organic molecules in, in uh, the same region with the liquid water. Because this is the food and the building blocks that make up life as we know it. And third, you need energy sources. Life has to be driven by something. And often, for plant life on the Earth, it's the sun. But if it's buried in the northern plains of Mars, it might be chemical energy, as we see in, in places on the Earth. OK, so searching for a habitable zone is one of our highest goals. But we also look at the geology and the uh, physical properties of the soil. If I can have the next graphic, let's zoom in to uh, our landing site. The landing site is shown by that green ellipse. And this is a picture taken by the high-rise camera orbiting Mars today uh, from, as part of the uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. And we can zoom in to the part of Mars that we're landing at. This is right in the center of our bullseye. And what we see is a mottled terrain. And this is caused by the ice expanding and contracting underneath the soil.